All right, here's a quick follow-up video to last week's design where I showed my approach to creating this print-in-place changed foam stand. So if you haven't checked out that video, make sure to go check it out. I show my design approach to creating this uh, hinged phone stand uh, and it's a print in place model, which means no assembly required. You simply pop it out of your build plate and it hinges uh, and allows you to fold it and unfold it. Really neat 3D printing technique here that you can apply to so many different projects. So today, what I wanted to show was how I printed it. And as you can see, it's got this really neat uh, pattern here. And I didn't design that in Fusion 360. I simply took advantage of some slicer settings to bring out these really neat infill designs. So, all right, we're gonna start here at the Fusion model. And one thing you wanna know is that this um, design here is made up of two separate bodies. And the thing is they don't touch. Uh, these two bodies do not overlap. If I bring in our section analysis here, you can see that we have a little clearance gap between the two bodies. So we're, we're gonna have to send two bodies uh, to our slicer. And the way we do that is we simply right click here, uh, right under our browser and where it says the name of our file, right click there and go to save as mesh. And basically whatever model you have toggled on here, it'll go ahead and send. So if you have the little visibility on, it'll send that to your slicer. You'll get this dialog box here and basically, you know, you can choose the format you want to send it, 3MF or STL. And if you want it to go directly to your slicer, just make sure you have this button checked, uh, send to 3D print utility, and you can tell it which slicer you want here, and uh, it'll go ahead and open up your slicer and send it right to it. If you do just wanna save it as an STL or 3MF as a separate file, just uncheck this button. But I have this set to go to my Prusa slicer, and I just love this feature in Fusion 360 because all I do is click OK, and Fusion will automatically open up my slicer and throw the model on the build plate. So let's take a look at this. Right now I have uh, my settings here sent to 0.25 millimeter layer height as my resolution. Uh, so that's that draft mode. And if everything else is pretty much default, so if I click slice now, you'll see that um, we get this situation here. So normal defaults, you get a few layers of bottom, uh, solid bottom layers, I believe that's four layers there. And then it starts doing the infill and then it does the four layers of top and fill there and it does the same thing for the hinge there. So first thing we'll do is let's get rid of that top and bottom layer because we just want to see that infill pattern there. So to do that we go to our print settings here and we're going to go to layers and perimeters and then that's the first tab here. You'll see we have a section here for solid layers right under horizontal shells and we're going to take the four for the top make that zero and do the same thing for the bottom. Now if we go back to our platter here and then we re-slice it, we can see we just have that infill there with no top or bottom layers. So let's go ahead and change the pattern here. This is the grid, which is cool, but there's some more interesting ones there we can take advantage of. To do that, we'll go to our infill tab here and we'll see our fill pattern here. We're gonna change that from grid uh, to the gyroid. I really like the gyroid, but there are other fun designs here you can definitely experiment with. So I'll select gyro, go back to the platter, and then re-slice it, and now we get this really cool pattern there. So a lot easier to do it here than to try to design this infusion. So with that, um, we can then change our infill. So that's 20% if we wanted uh, you know, less uh, dense of, a, of an infill here. We can just uh, highlight this, change that to 5, and then uh, re-slice that, and we can see we get this situation here which is uh, definitely too uh, too sparse there so we can change that let's say I think 15 was a good infill pattern so we'll slice that at 15 and maybe even like 10 bring that to 10 but this is something you could definitely experiment with just make sure every time you change the number here you click on uh, slice not to re-slice it so I like the look of that um, but I'll show you a problem here so if I bring this slider down Note here, actually, note that we've got two perimeters here. So that's, the, again, the default. It does two solid perimeters, um, which may be okay around the edges there. But if I kind of go up here, if we look at that hinge and I bring this uh, slider up, notice that it doesn't end up closing it completely. We've got a little gap in the middle there. And so as it starts to go up, if I go one layer at a time, that's kind of how it ends. So just kind of not enough um, 
uh, material there on the outside. And so what we're going to do is we're going to increase the number of perimeters. So we'll go back to print settings, go to our uh, layers and perimeters, our first tab here, and then we're going to change that perimeter. We'll just bring it up by two more, make it four instead of two. Go back to our platter and then we'll re-slice that. And, you know, first thing we'll notice is now we have, you know, four perimeters here instead of two, which is going to make our design quite a bit stronger. But the, the great thing here is we now fix that issue with this part, the top here, not closing. So if I bring the slider down and then we go up again by layer, you can see now it fully closes and it adds another layer on top. So that fixes that issue. So basically just some quick setting changes that you can do here to get this uh, really neat design is um, go ahead and uh, remove your top and bottom layers, those solid layers, and then increase your uh, perimeters. And um, that's basically it. And then you can play around with your infill setting to get the look you want and change the infill to whatever pattern you like. Um, but here is the even more beautiful thing about this is that this design prints in under 20 minutes. Look at that, 19 minutes to, to print this. So you can just have like a bunch of these and just pop them out of your build plate and give them to friends and family or maybe at an event. Um, and people will love these because they they print quick, they're very practical and, and they look really nice. You can just kind of fold this, put it in your pocket and you've got this little phone stand with you wherever you go. That's kind of what I was going with this. I wanted sort of a minimalistic, uh, quick print, uh, you know, phone stand that would allow me to show a print in place technique here that you can use. So, all right, that's it. Um, go ahead and uh, try this out, experiment with the settings and uh, take a look at, again, creating this design, the tutorial that I have. Um, you can follow that to create it and then come back to this one um, to go ahead and 3D print it. Uh, definitely let me know if you uh, try it out. Let me know in the comments below um, how it comes out. And if you have any questions on my approach here, leave those in the comments as well. Also, make sure to check the links I have below in the description. I've got some really great resources for you if you're looking to learn how to design your own models with Fusion 360. I will see you guys in the next one.